I love work. I love my job. I love to work. I love to work when things are going great, and I love to work when things are going crappy. I just sort of love my work. Jennifer Aniston is one of the biggest names in the entertainment industry today. Rising to fame in the 1990s and maintaining her popularity with fans, she is still as relatable as the girl next door, Rachel Green, her character best loved by her fans. I was just grateful to work. I honestly knew that to be, be an actor is tough, to be a working actor is even harder. I was just happy working. And I think that as I grew older, I started to get more focused on, on the parts that I wanted to play and that I wanted, I just knew I wanted to just break out and do other things, you know, and that, this was great and I love all this, but I know that there's more that I, I want to do and that I'm capable of. Going from unknown actress to worldwide sensation overnight, Jennifer Aniston influenced fashion with her stylish outfits and classic hairstyle throughout her time on Friends continuing to turn heads over 20 years later. Her popularity has never declined, proven by her record-breaking Instagram account, and her roles in television and film are becoming more refined as years go by. A consistent fan favorite, Jennifer Aniston is a Hollywood household name who will always be there for you. A little bit about myself. Well, I was born in Sherman Oaks, California. Um, grew up in New York City. Uh, went to the high school performing arts. Then um, I moved to California after school and uh, became an actress. An actress. Mm -hmm. A little TV show. Mm -hmm. Got a little TV show. I like dogs. I like skiing. Um, I like Mexican food. Um, not a fan of flying, but I'm getting better at that. Jennifer Aniston was born February 11, 1969, in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Sherman Oaks. With her father being a popular actor on the daytime drama series Days of Our Lives, Jennifer already had high hopes of showbiz fame. As a child, she moved to New York City. Despite her father's television career, she was discouraged from watching television, but found ways around the prohibition. Aged six years old, she began attending Waldorf School, where she discovered her love for acting. Everybody who watches soaps of any kind in the States knows her dad, John Anston, uh, for that character. So she had a really famous dad, and she had a mom who was also an actress, not very well known, called Nancy Dow, but he, she'd been a model, so she was very pretty and attractive. Jennifer has spoken openly about her childhood and that she never felt pretty. Her mom actually, who she had a very somewhat contentious relationship with over the years, Jennifer says, you know, flat out told her, you're not pretty or you're, you know, your nose is too big or you're never gonna be able to be an actress, you're not pretty enough. And that dynamic had a massive impact on Jen. I think it still does actually. Kind of growing up with a beautiful, picture-perfect mom and a dad who's, you know, a famous actor and feeling a little bit unsure of what your position is. She attended LaGuardia High School of Music, Art, and Performing Arts, where she joined the School Drama Society and performed in some shows. Jennifer, from a very early age, had incredible comedic timing. She's a natural in film. She's a natural personality. And she went to a performing arts high school in New York, which is very famous. It's like the school that they made the TV show Fame about, LaGuardia High School. After finishing school, Jennifer Aniston first worked as an actress in off-Broadway productions. She supported herself with part-time jobs, which included a telemarketer, waitress, and a bike messenger. There are some people in Hollywood who are so gifted at what they do, and they almost immediately find work. Now, of course, the fact that Jennifer's dad is a famous actor would have helped her to get an agent or a manager, maybe open some doors to get some auditions. But Jennifer managed to start working almost straight away after she came to Hollywood. After moving back to Los Angeles, Jennifer landed a role in the 1990 horror film, Leprechaun which was considered a major career move at the time. 
However, it has been identified now as her most questionable role, and Jennifer herself has expressed embarrassment over it. She obtained her first regular television role on Malloy in 1990 and appeared in Ferris Bueller, a television adaptation of the 1986 film Ferris Bueller's Day Off. However, both series were quickly canceled, leaving Jennifer questioning her acting career. Depressed over her four unsuccessful television shows, Jennifer Aniston approached Warren Littlefield at a Los Angeles gas station asking for reassurance. The head of NBC Entertainment encouraged her to continue acting, and a few months later helped cast her for Friends, a sitcom that was set to debut on NBC's 1994-1995 fall lineup. It was after the movie Leprechaun, of course, that she auditioned for both Saturday Night Live and the show Friends. And she actually got the part on Saturday Night Live. She was invited to be one of the players, which by the way, is really hard to get. I mean, you have to understand like every comedian, like stand up comic around the world is auditioning for Saturday Night Live. And Jennifer was such a natural comedian that she got invited to be one of the Saturday Night Live players. She's not a stand-up comic, but she just has fantastic timing. I think a lot of people don't give Jennifer enough credit for the natural comic that she is. And the fact that Saturday Night Live wanted to hire her as a comic says a lot about her natural ability to make people laugh. Of course, uh, right when she gets Saturday Night Live, she also gets invited to be on Friends. I think it was called Friends Like Us at the time. And she had a big decision to make. But ultimately, she decided to take the role on Friends and turn down Saturday Night Live in hopes that this pilot would in fact be picked up. And we now know it's one of the most successful TV franchises in the history of television. What's really interesting is that Jennifer Aniston is known as a more serious actress, as a more versatile actress, but really comedy was what she came up in and what I think she saw herself as originally. Because when she accepted the role of Rachel Green in Friends, she also had been offered a slot at, on Saturday Night Live. So comedy and being that kind of person that can play all different kinds of roles, even though now I think people are like, look at this wide array of, you know, of spectrum she can play. I think that was part of the DNA of who she was from a very early time. Friends was extremely successful, and Jennifer Aniston, along with her co-stars, gained worldwide recognition among television viewers. Her character, Rachel Green, was widely popular and was later recognized as one of the greatest female characters in American television. When Jennifer first read for Friends, they wanted her to read for Monica Geller, which is interesting because they wanted Courtney to be the part of Rachel Green. Both actresses looked at that and said, actually, I'm more that person than the other. Courtney Cox was the big star when Friends was commissioned. She was going to be the star, and they wanted her to be Rachel Green. But when Courtney read the script, she said, actually, I'm much more like Monica Geller. I am the kind of type A, obsessive, compulsive, neat person. I'm not Rachel Green. Jennifer Aniston was the perfect Rachel Green. And so with her comic timing, the way she looked, kind of this all-American, every girl individual, uh, it just worked magic. Surprise! <laughs> what? No, don't, don't get mad, because look, this is what happened. So I, I started packing, and then I realized, what am I doing? I am lousy at packing, <laughs> right? But you love packing. So as a gift to you, on our last night, ta-da! <laughs> I'll be coordinator. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I didn't get you anything. Oh. The role also got her nominated for two Golden Globe Awards and won in 2003 as Best Actress, Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. Jennifer has talked about in her childhood not feeling pretty enough. And of course she is beautiful. However, it was the fact that she wasn't supermodel looking that made Rachel Green so lovable and believable. If you think about it, if Rachel Green had looked like Giselle Bündchen, the character just wouldn't have been believable or funny or real. The fact that Rachel Green looked like a really pretty girl that maybe works in your office is part of what gave her that kind of magic X factor. Jennifer's longtime collaborator, Chris McMillan, has been her hairdresser ever since she first stepped 
foot on the soundstage for Friends. Chris McMillan and she have developed a lifetime friendship, but it was he who initially came up with the Rachel haircut. Now, Jennifer has made no secret of the fact that she hated that haircut. She has said, I thought it was the ugliest haircut I've ever seen. So she never loved the hair, but of course the rest of the world fell in love with it. You feel beautiful, you feel sexy, you feel alive, and then you feel screwed because no one has the ability to actually do what Chris did to this haircut. And I've called it, used to call it the, the Rachel years when I got that haircut. <laughs> that was like, wow, this is amazing. And then I was totally left with this like Greek frizzy mop on my head because I had no idea how to do what he did. No one seems to know how to do what Chris does. I think every woman wanted to be Rachel Green. And what I mean by that, she worked for a fashion label. She had a cute, fun boyfriend. Just her storyline was so appealing. And I think that made the haircut an aspirational thing that any girl could go and get. The show itself won many awards whilst on the air proving it was a success with audiences and critics alike. There's a new script every week, so that's fresh. And, then, and it, um, yeah. And it's always good. So it's if the writing is always exciting and, and interesting and fun, then the, the work will be. And we all have such a good time together that we just have a blast. So yeah, we help each other, too. Come up with, David's very good at that, by the way, just helping us come up with interesting choices with props or, or just other choices, you know? We also get a certain amount of time off in the year, about four months, so when we do come back in the fall, it's almost like coming back to school and kind of mm -hmm. uh, that reunion uh, always recharges us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. having fun? Yeah, great, great. Are you really actually Yes, friends? yes, for the last time, we are all actually good friends. Thank you. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Jennifer, along with her female co-stars, Courtney Cox and Lisa Kudrow, became the highest paid television actress of all time with her $1 million per episode paycheck for the final season of Friends. The cast also made headlines for their solidarity to one another regarding their paychecks. Long before Hollywood had tackled the gender pay gap, the cast had all agreed they should be paid the same and allegedly refused to work until they all earned an equal salary. They were all close. And I think it was that close-knit, uh, genuine friendships that played out so well on screen. And of course, we saw this was the first cast to negotiate together so that they all had the same salary. It was actually Courtney Cox who did the rest of them a favor because she had the biggest salary. She was the big star going into this. But it was David Schwimmer who actually said, look, let's do this as a team and they then they'll have to pay us all the same. And they did. And they did that all the way through. And they even all agreed if one left the show, they would all leave. And they did. And they followed through with that. They, they had a genuinely mutual friendship and respect for each other. We're friends. We're, I mean, we're six different people that seem to gel pretty well. And we'd get together and watch the show together on Thursday nights. And I don't know, we, we, it's just, it just worked from the second we met each other. We're really lucky. That's all I can say about that. Her character's relationship with Ross Geller, portrayed by David Schwimmer in the show, was widely popular among audiences. And the couple was frequently voted as television's favorite couple in polls and magazines. The constant ups and downs between characters Ross and Rachel kept audiences on their toes, including the relationship break they took, which is one of the most infamous scenes from the show, which fans still quote to this day. There were so many things in Friends that became cultural phenomenons, like, you know, we were on a break. Everybody knows exactly what that's referring to. It was more than a TV show. It was iconic. We were on a break! <laughs> Coffee house? You bet. <laughs> and for the record, it took two people to break up this relationship. Yeah, you and that girl from the coffee place, which yesterday you took full responsibility for. I didn't know what I was taking responsibility for, okay? I didn't finish the whole letter. What? I fell asleep. You fell asleep? <laughs> it was 5.30 in the morning. Rachel has grown up really beautifully and, you know, she, they've rounded her out and given her a lot of life to, you know, interesting experiences, life experiences, and, and given me a lot of fun stuff to play, especially with the, with the pregnancy and all of that. I mean, you know, that's kind of, 
you know. I don't know when we'll ever really be done with each other. It's going to be a hard moment whenever it does happen. But this, do I dare say, truly, I think is the last one. <laughs> The show concluded in 2004, after 10 years. However, fans are still obsessed with the sitcom, which is still watched regularly by viewers. Courtney and Jen have both said that they're surprised and delighted at how well the show stands up now. You know, the fact that it's still so popular amongst a whole different generation who all have mobiles and have all kinds of things about their lives that look really different to how it looked at Central Perk. Life doesn't work like that anymore. No one would ever sit around a coffee shop without being on their phone, ever. But the show still resonates. The, those things are still funny. The things are still true. The cast are also still close friends and keep in regular contact, particularly Jennifer and Courtney Cox. Calling her her best friend, Jennifer is the godmother of Courtney's daughter, Coco. Jennifer has stated that Courtney has been there for her through the many ups and downs in her life, and she has slept in her guest room for weeks at a time. It's no secret that Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox are best friends, and they became so on the set of Friends. They used to eat lunch together every single day, and Courtney is like a sister to her. You know, Jen never had a sister, and Courtney Cox is the sister she never had. 1998 marked the beginning of Jennifer's famous relationship with Hollywood legend Brad Pitt. The pair were introduced to each other in 1998 and went on their very first date after it was arranged by their managers. Jennifer had met Brad, I guess, as Hollywood people meet each other in an earlier stage before they started dating. He was dating Gwyneth Paltrow at the time, and she said, I just thought, you know, he was this really cool guy from Missouri. He seemed like a real guy. They were later set up uh, following his breakup with Gwyneth Paltrow, and she was single by their managers. And Jennifer said later that she knew following that date that this was going to be like a really significant relationship. Apparently, the date, according to her, was just really easy and really fun. You can see why Jennifer and Brad immediately clicked. They're both really down-to-earth, funny people who are real people. They're not sort of massively caught up in the Hollywood lifestyle. It was a massive deal when Brad and Jennifer got together. Now, Jen had already been dating various celebrities and actors and also musicians. She was famously with Adam Duritz from The Counting Crows in 1995. So dating other celebrities was not new for Jennifer Aniston. However, Brad Pitt was on a career just trajectory that was going up, 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 up. He had already been, of course, in Thelma and Louise, which had made him a household name. And movies like Fight Club were coming out around the same time. So he was an A-lister. Jen was an A-lister, of course, from being in Friends, where she was commanding $1 million per episode. So the two of them together, you have like the most powerful set symbol from the movie industry with the most popular woman from television together. It was like the ultimate power couple. After they were together, you just could not go anywhere without seeing their faces. From everything from People, National Choir, every single gossip show, it was just Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt constantly everywhere. And I think that there was something people found really appealing because she was so much the girl next door. Jennifer and Brad became the first modern super couple. They were really the kind of benchmark that we use now. I mean, now you'll hear about couples there. They're the Jennifer and Brad of now. They were Hollywood's golden couple. Brad eventually proposed to Jennifer in November 1999, and the pair wed in a Malibu celebration in July 2000, surrounded by 200 guests and 50,000 flowers. Throughout the filming of Friends, Jennifer Aniston had still been making frequent appearances in various films. The first of her biggest box office roles was in Bruce Almighty, starring alongside Jim Carrey in 2003. During an interview in 2004, Jennifer confirmed her plans to start a family with her husband, Brad Pitt, just months before he started filming Mr. and Mrs. Smith alongside co-star Angelina Jolie. It was very strange to be reporting on Brad and Jen when Brad was filming Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie had a reputation as this kind of homewrecker. 
So when Brad started working with Angelina, everybody was already kind of raising an eyebrow and this and that. However, Brad was, you know, he was seen as such a good guy and, you know, the guy next door and happily in love. And in fact, Jennifer Aniston herself said that, you know, she didn't have trepidation about him working with Angelina. She actually met Angelina for the first time. She saw her on the lot where they made friends and Jen pulled over and said to Angelina, you know, I hope you guys enjoy working together. Brad's really looking forward to it. You're going to have, I hope you have so much fun. So Jen wasn't nervous or jealous or insecure when he started working with Angelina, but uh, it, it certainly turned into something that would ultimately destroy her marriage. Rumors began to circle around regarding Brad and Angelina's relationship while filming their movie together. However, Jennifer assured friends she wasn't concerned about the pair spending time together. Now, Friends was wrapped up, and Jen was telling different magazines her plans, and her plans were to go to the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith and have some time hanging out with Brad. Now, that obviously didn't happen because on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Brad and Angelina got very, very close and cozy. Angelina has said, I would never have slept with a married man. My dad cheated on my mom, and I just wouldn't do that to another woman. But she also said, you know, basically they were falling in love on set and she couldn't wait to get to work every day. And, you know, that's where they fell in love. I remember watching an interview with Angelina after they were together. And she said, I remember telling our kids, this is where mommy and daddy fell in love when they were making the movie. So she herself has said that she and Brad fell in love. And it was certainly the love and the relationship that developed, whether it was sexual or just emotional, but that relationship would derail Brad and Jen's marriage and put the final kind of nail in that coffin. In early 2005, the fateful announcement came that Jennifer and Brad were calling it quits. Despite claiming they would remain friends, tensions between Jennifer and Angelina were obvious as it was clear that the breakdown of their marriage had been somewhat influenced by Brad's close relationship with his co-star. Angelina Jolie would later go on to explain in an interview that she had fallen in love with Brad while they were filming Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and the pair ended up married in 2014. When Brad and Jen split up, there was a massive cultural shift between those who were Team Jen and Team Angelina. I mean, people actually wore T-shirts um, in LA a lot of us felt for Jen. If you look back at the origins of the kind of world's feeling like this poor sad Jen, which has been this storyline, it began when Brad left Jen for Angelina. Jennifer Aniston represents more than just a great actress with fantastic comedic timing. She is the every woman who has been cheated on or has been betrayed or someone left for somebody else, and she has become the symbol. I don't think Jen actually wants to be the symbol of every woman's sympathy and compassion, but that has what's happened. Jen has been locked in this kind of Bermuda Triangle when it comes to the tabloids with her and Brad and Angelina. And Jennifer has spoken numerous times about her desire to stop being a part of that narrative. However, the impact of the Brad, Jen, Angelina triangle was felt for decades afterwards. After headlines regarding her failing marriage had calmed down, in 2005, Jennifer Aniston appeared as an alluring woman having an affair with an advertising executive in the thriller Derailed and as an obituary and wedding announcement writer in the romantic comedy Rumor Has It. Both films were moderate box office hits. She also took on the role of a single cash-strapped woman working as a maid in the independent drama Friends With Money in 2006, which received a limited release. I mean, for me, it was just, uh, I read the script and I related to the part and I didn't really go into a sort of a thought of how does this reflect on, on, our, on women today, but it just was real. It was just a beautifully written and, 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 and delicate um, expression of, of human beings relating to each other, and it felt like it's universe, it felt universal. It didn't feel, um, I didn't sort of, you know, I, I looked at my own life, I looked at friends that I know, you know, and it was just, it, you didn't even have to go that far. It was just, you read it and you said, oh gosh, that's so true and so relatable. Her next film was the romantic comedy, The Breakup in 2006, alongside Vince Vaughn. 
in which she starred as one half of a couple having a complicated split when both refused to move out of the pair's recently purchased home. Fine, I'll All help right. you do the dishes. No, that's not what I want. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? <laughs> I'm done. What? What happened? We just broke up. You could stay with me. You think I'm going to move out of the place and let her keep it? I don't know. I'm not Columbo. The only logical thing that I can think of is for her to move out of the condo and then to pay me some sort of a penalty. What? 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 Excuse me? At the time, Jennifer was dealing with the breakdown of her own marriage from Brad Pitt and has notably mentioned channeling her own personal emotions for the role. You always wait for those scripts to come along that are, are, are you know, true and real to life in some way. And, you know, sometimes they're really not. And this had really equal uh, male and female. And it was funny and it was, uh, and it was real. And it had a great cast and it was just all the right ingredients. The film received mixed reviews, but grossed approximately $39.17 million during its opening weekend and $204 million worldwide, making it her second biggest box office hit. The 2005 comedy drama Marley and Me, with Aniston and Owen Wilson as the owners of the titular dog, set a record for the largest Christmas Day box office sales ever with $14.7 million. It earned a total of $51.7 million over the four-day weekend and placed number one at the box office, a position it maintained for two weeks. I mean, the book was like a huge sort of beloved kind of bestseller, and it was like, I mean, it's just like a simple story, yeah. and then it's like, I guess like people just kind of connected with sort of, you know, that it was very sort of relatable. Yeah. It was clear that Jennifer Aniston was becoming a popular actress in her own right, and breaking away from her famous role as Rachel Green, which she is most memorable for. Jennifer Aniston appeared as the former wife of a bounty hunter played by Gerard Butler in the romantic comedy action film, The Bounty Hunter in 2010. Hi Milo. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. Fancy. I don't know what you're up to, but I'm working. Oh, working? Me too. I heard you got kicked off the force. What I do is I hunt down idiots who jump bail. You are a bounty hunter? Yep. As much as it pains me to say this, I gotta take you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had so much fun and um, just easy. He's just so easy to get along with, you know? We just instantly were comfortable. There's. I've said this before, there's nothing pretentious about him. There's nothing, there's no layers to have to cut through to get down to the guy. He's just there, just eager and excited to be there and, and wants to do the best. So that, that we both sort of have that same way of looking at, at work and, and trying different things and, you know, so. The film was panned by critics, although it was a box office success, garnering over $130 million worldwide. We just had a group, we just lucked out. We just literally had a great group of people. The director is fantastic, Terry, fantastic. Our, our crew, you do, New York City is all just, you can't go wrong. The toughest stunt, I would say the car, the two cars chasing, getting shot at. It wasn't hard, it was just a little scary. <laughs> A lukewarm box office reception greeted her next film, the romantic comedy The Switch, in which she starred with Jason Bateman as a 30-something single woman who decides to have a child using a sperm bank. I've never laughed harder, and you can't give away what The Switch is, though. No. It's really, that's half of the thing that made me laugh so hard, because how could this actually happen? We actually had a hard time wrapping our heads around, like, how could this possibly happen? It's so insane. And when you tell, when you get pitched the story, which is how I first heard it from the producers, when we were also coming, because we came on as producers as well, my partner and I. <sighs> it's just, that's why we loved it. It was such a unique story. Um, um, you know, it's sort of the modern family. The film received generally mixed reviews, with review site Metacritic showing 13 out of 30 critics delivering a positive verdict. In 2011, she starred opposite close friend Adam Sandler as an office manager posing as the wife of a plastic surgeon in the romantic comedy Just Go With It, 
and played sexually aggressive dentist Dr. Julia Harris in Horrible Bosses, which also starred Jason Bateman, Jason Sudeikis, and Charlie Day. Just Go With It and Horrible Bosses both made over $100 million in North America and $200 million worldwide, another two of Jennifer Aniston's top grossing box office movies. It was so fun. I mean, it doesn't come along very often to be able to be crazy and with total freedom and just and be as bad as you want it to be. Her role in Horrible Bosses is one of her most favored, explaining that she loved playing the character as the image change was fun for her. Jennifer Aniston appeared in the comedy Wanderlust in 2012 with Paul Rudd, who had starred alongside her previously in The Object of My Affection and also Friends. We just get up and come back to work and be so excited to see. It was a very happy makeup and hair and makeup trailer, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. We were all very, very happy, happy campers. And it had been a while since you guys had worked together, but you guys are obviously friends and you've remained friends. So yeah. that probably totally helped, too, with the on-screen chemistry. It was just like there. Yeah, right? totally, com well, completely. And we've been, we've been trying to find something to do together, so this was pretty great. This is a fun one to get. It is, it is nice when you're when you're playing a married couple, and you don't have to really create too much of it, like a, like a fake history or just, we already have, we've known each other for oh, you know, nearly 20 years, so. I wouldn't call this a romantic comedy at all, would you? It's a, just a balls out comedy. Um, <laughs> with a <Literally>. relationship, <laughs> balls out, <laughs> literally comedy. Um, it's, what do they take away? I think you're gonna have a la big bellyache laughs and, and, and I think there's a definite story and theme in there and a message. It was on the set of Wanderlust that Jennifer Aniston developed a close relationship with Justin Thoreau. They were frequently spotted together after the film before confirming their relationship in 2011. Well, Jennifer and Justin had actually met um, years before they got together on the set of Tropic Thunder, which Justin wrote. And, you know, in Hollywood, most people kind of have met at one thing or another. So they also had mutual friends. Robert Downey Jr. is a friend of Jennifer and Justin. They got together when they made a movie together and they had real chemistry and seemed to be you know, really great for each other. She had found a mature, adult, successful guy who wasn't this kind of John Mayer type. Her fans couldn't get enough of the relationship, believing that this time Jennifer was going to get her happy ending. After the controversy of her last serious relationship with Brad Pitt, everyone just wanted to see her happy ever after. In 2012, Jennifer and Justin announced their engagement. Reuniting with Jason Sudeikis, Jennifer played the role of a struggling stripper who agrees to pose as the wife of a drug dealer in order to help him smuggle drugs across the border in We're the Millers. Oh, come on, relax, Dorothy, Jesus. We're not at the border yet. Who cares what those people think? <gasps> it's about not drawing attention to ourselves, you little hobo. Hey, don't talk to her like that. Rose, relax, okay? The only thing you need to worry about right now is making people believe you could actually be someone's mother, okay? Are you kidding me? Honestly, after doing Horrible Bosses, I kind of feel like I opened the door for myself. So I was just happy to be able to have fun again, do something a little bit on that side. And tell us about how you prepare for it, because I know, you, you know you're very um, rigid with your exercise training and all of that, but I yeah. mean, preparing for this role, I mean, as a dancer. Well, quite... that's, I had a, a great choreographer who really just worked with me day in and day out and instilled all of the, the right moves that I needed to learn and also recovering from a annoying knee and surgery that I'd had about a month out, month before, was a bit of a challenge, but we did it. The 2013 film was hilarious and loved by audiences worldwide. Although the film received mixed reviews from critics, it did extremely well at the box office, becoming a financial success. 2014 saw Jennifer Aniston reprise the role of Dr. Julia Harris and Horrible Bosses 2. A lot of you guys have worked together before in previous films. So does that make it more comfortable on set and is it fun to reunite? Absolutely. 100%. Yes. We actually only really, we, it, but it is a luxury actually to, to A, be, be friends with these people and, and 
love and adore them on a personal level, and then to be able to have worked together, separately together, and together together, um, it's 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 kind of a dream job. It would be terrible if we didn't like each other, you know. Because oh. I mean, you're doing the fact that you're doing comedy. It, you need to have like a nice, free, fun set. Like there's like there's a good vibe in here. So like the press conference is fun. You know, like if we hated each other, you'd feel it, and it would just be like. Oh. You've seen it, I'm sure. I, you <laughs> yeah. probably have better stories about it than we do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like so I was I was looking point. forward to doing this. Yeah, you know, this is not it's part of the th yeah. one of the things that we, the three of us talked about. When we got on the phone together when they first said, you know, do you want to do a sequel? The three of us called each other. We, we talked about junketing and we talked about traveling and, and be like this right here. We, this is part of the fun for us. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really rare when you find people that you like this much and then you get to do two movies. It's, it's great. What did you enjoy about revisiting this character and playing Dr. Julia once again? What do you love about it the most? What do you enjoy about it the most? Uh... I have to say, I, well, I just love her in general. I think she's quite um, snazzy, uh, and I, I loved, I loved just putting on her her wardrobe, and I loved my her wig and her, the accessories. her accessories, which only one person really was aware of what my lovely necklace really was. Mr. Jason Sudeikis <laughs> gives you a little insight into. Um, his personal life? I love life? catalogs. I love yeah. catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? For me personally, I, I loved that Dr. Julia was sort of taking the role of what would normally be a, a male character in a, in a film. You mean a dentist? Yeah. Yeah. You, do. you don't see a lot of female dentists, yeah. do you? Yeah, I guess you don't. Yeah. The woman who is obsessed with sex, I think it's hysterical. And I find it quite amusing because I don't think to her she's it's there's anything wrong or, or deviant about herself. I think she actually is describe describes sex and, and approaches sex as as though a, a, a chef approaches a wonderful meal to be made or or you know I think it's kind of just very commonplace for her, and it's sort of it's like sport. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. The film did just as well as its predecessor and was a hit with audiences. In 2014, she also starred in Cake as a woman named Claire Simmons who struggles with chronic pain. The film received mixed reviews. However, Jennifer's performance was highly praised, dubbed by some critics as Oscar-worthy. I mean, I think her vulnerable spot was just everything that she's she's walking through. I think it's the... the um, I think her vulnerable spot is Adriana. I think that's where she kind of you still feel that that fierce protector in her come out, um, which now where we've met her, she's kind of just stuck and given up on everything. Um, I find every all of her moments, even all the scenes with Sam, I found to be quite vulnerable and, and sort of just sad in a way. There was a good amount of preparation I think about I would say about two months I kind of really dove in and and started just asking all the questions and speaking with as many people as I could and trying to get the physicality and in, in place and understanding what that physicality was going to be and and making it consistent um, and understanding in the script what was what was true was there anything that seemed off point anything that felt like mm, we call 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 your bluff and because we really wanted it to be as bulletproof as possible and authentic as possible. The Toronto International Film Festival called her performance heartbreakingly good. For her portrayal, Jennifer was nominated for several awards, proving she could excel in more serious roles than she is classically known for. August 2015, Jennifer Aniston married Justin Thoreau in an intimate ceremony in the backyard of their new Bel Air home. Attendees included a host of celebrities, including some of her friends' co-stars. According to Us Magazine, the couple signed an ironclad prenup agreement before going on a honeymoon with friends. Between 2015 and 2017, Jennifer Aniston worked on a string of films that received average critical reviews, such as the romantic comedy Mother's Day and the war drama The Yellow Birds. 
2017 also saw the end of her marriage to Justin Thoreau, which came as a shock to fans. Jennifer's divorce from Justin was it kind of blindsided everyone in the entertainment reporting industry. We didn't see it coming. In fact, I know somebody from Architectural Digest who had just finished an interview with Jen at her home with Justin. And Jennifer talked about him as if they were in love and everything was great. And there was no indication from her whatsoever. However, the person also said that, you know, Justin appeared to have his own wing of the house, his own bathroom, his own bedroom. And there were definite signs that they might not have had a very traditional kind of relationship at that stage, but we don't know for sure. He's very much a New Yorker, East Coast, did not like fame in terms of, was not used to being followed around all the time. She, on the other hand, was very, very Los Angeles, very much a household name at that point, and, you know, very much in the whole Hollywood bubble kind of vibe. So that, I think that they kind of put that aside when they first got together. They issued a joint statement to the press explaining that they had wished to keep things private, but since the gossip industry would make up different stories, they thought they'd set the record straight so their fans knew the truth. Although the couple had been very much in love, they had major differences from the start, which ultimately led to their divorce. So while Jen was totally used to, I mean, she may not have liked it, but she was used to being followed around all the time by the media, Thru was not used to that. In fact, he liked being anonymous and he liked the anonymity that being in New York gave him. And I think at first he put that aside. He put the lifestyle that Jennifer Aniston had to live being Jennifer Aniston. He just accepted it because he loved her and he wanted to, to believe in their relationship. But as time went on, it was just omnipresent being followed and no personal life was personal. And that was one of the main factors I think really wore down the marriage. That and just kind of the intrinsic differences between East Coast and West Coast in America and those two vibes are just so different. So those things really drove a wedge between the two of them. All of us really thought they were happy. So we were really surprised, I think, as, as, a, as a group when that was announced. You know, Jennifer and Justin from the very beginning have been adamant that there was no one else involved. They parted as friends, that they're still, you know, connected. But if things were really great, it's hard to imagine why they would split up. You know, everyone wants to know what went wrong. And I think what's mostly been reported is that Justin is this kind of hipster New Yorker and he'd only wanted to live in the, you know, Greenwich Village. And Jen is this LA, California girl who loves sun tanning and couldn't really be cool and gritty and urban enough for Justin. But honestly, I don't believe that is true at all. I think Jennifer, who's from New York, has enough urban cred and, and you know, is enough of a city girl to appeal to Justin. I think it was more that, you know, you've got a guy who maybe wants to be single. In December 2018, Jennifer worked as an executive producer and starred in the Netflix film Dumplin', a coming-of-age comedy film based off of the young adult novel of the same name. Most people call me Will, except for my mom, who calls me... Dumplin', I can't be late. This cannot exactly drive itself. Being a bit of a celebrity around here meant that she was too busy for me. You've got a hole in your left, by the way. <gasps> what? Oh, she didn't listen to me. This was Jennifer's first project for the streaming platform, which was shortly followed by more projects the same year. Jennifer appeared in Murder Mystery, alongside close friend Adam Sandler a comedy-turned-drama about a couple framed for murder on a luxury yacht. Did you ever fool around on a boat? I just lay here and the boat does all the work. Let's bring a mold off! Should we pull it up? No, it's a foot long now. Ah! Will you listen to my husband? He's a detective! I'll put it back. Don't put it back. <laughs> twisted my arm, barely, not even a little bit. It's just, how do you say no to that? He says, please, and you say yes. It was all Jen saying, we have to do something together. I can't be apart this long. You're an amazing human. I feel so uh, sick to my stomach when you're not near me. So I said, let me just make a movie with you so you can relax. Jen is like, you forget like how much of a titan of comedy she actually is. I think I kind of forgot about that, but it's like, she's unreal. Her wit is razor sharp. Like, she can never lose a beat, 
Adam can be saying something, because I, I encourage improvisation in the moment in all of my films. So Adam can be improving and take it off the rails or something, and she won't let him go off the rails. She'll just bring him right back with truth. This was her second project for Netflix, and the film was favored by audiences, being the most watched film on the streaming platform in the U.S. in 2019. I think just being able to see an old throwback murder mystery, you know, we haven't, I mean, I loved those as a kid growing up, um, and it's just a real fun old-fashioned whodunit. You know, we were from, uh, you know, Brooklyn and kind of fish out of water, and there were all sort of upper-crusted, you know, wealthy people who all had a motive as to, you know, into what, who offing the, the man who was off, so it kind of just was part of the story. Jennifer Aniston made her return to television on November 1st, 2019, producing and starring alongside Reese Witherspoon in the Apple TV Plus drama, The Morning Show. What's the show well, I about? I haven't had to describe the show. No, I know. It's it's a morning news show. Yeah. Behind, it's it's of, drawing, pulling yeah. the curtain on behind the scenes of of the talk morning talk shows and their- Yeah, what she said. What I said. It is her first main television role since the conclusion of Friends in 2004. In, in terms of the workload, it didn't feel that different. It didn't feel like I'm going back to, going back to television so, so much because it was the schedule. Television was, has changed. Tell, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll tell you, this, sister. Let me tell you something. This is not what it used to no. be. It used to be a lot more, it was a lot easier than this. <laughs> or maybe we're just a little older. Um, but yeah. In The Morning Show, Jennifer stars as Alex Levy, a veteran news host who wakes up one day to discover that her co-host of 15 years, Mitch Kessler, played by Steve Carell, has been fired following allegations of sexual assault. She is then tasked with delivering the news to the nation while also grappling with what her friend has done and renegotiating her contract with the network. My life just ended for no good reason. <laughs> We're in the middle of an epic rebirth. Her sell-by date expired years ago. I want you to start grooming some new people. I don't fit the mold. What mold is that? Any mold, really? Your show sucks. Thank you. It's Thank barely you. news. I want wardrobe tests, screen tests, makeup tests. We need a contract. Where's legal? Ready? I'm ready. Most people want to trust that the person that is telling them about the world is an honest person. Yeah. Well, there, you know, a lot of stories came out about sexual harassment in media and on these news programs, and um, and we just really wanted to address it, whether or not, you know, corporations knew what was happening, whether they were covering it up, and it's a big part of our culture now, it's discovering the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit, uh, what a shift has taken place since then mm. for the for the better, I yeah. think, and more, of course, way more to go, but. I think Carrie, our Aaron, our, our writer, our creator, really just wrote a brilliant script and, and layered and complicated characters. And also um, sh sh sort of took a look at this whole new normal that we're all walking through in a very, you know, not a black and white. It was, she allowed the gray areas to sort of be explored. So. The morning show manages to more sensitively juggle the mix of complicated emotions and motivations swirling among the men and women caught up in this drama about ambition and abuse. The, the cultural reckoning about yeah. sexual harassment and work environments that weren't safe, and I think that's, we go right into it, so. You're pretty head on and, and unapologetically, mm -hmm. and also tonally that was really important to us, that it doesn't come from a specific point of view, that it's not preachy in any way, but that it's actually, as we're all trying to figure out what the the new play play playbook, how do we're all, what's how do we behave in this new normal? What's okay? What's allowed? What's politically correct? And the characters don't know either. No, we're, they're just they're as just, confused as everyone in the world. We're all figuring it out t together. Jennifer won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Drama Series and was nominated for two Golden Globe Awards for Best Actress, Television Series Drama, and Best Television Series Drama as the series producer. After years of aversion to social media, Jennifer Aniston finally joined Instagram on October 15, 2019, causing the app to break. If Instagram is truly a reliable tool to judge and gauge how popular somebody is, 
Well, I think Jennifer Aniston could just about be the most popular person in the world. When she joined finally on Instagram, she basically broke it. So many people, you know, millions of people immediately got on to follow her. It's a, it's a new terrain I'm, I'm exploring. Um, I know it gets fun, right? You love it. Yeah, well, you get used to it. Yes. You do get used to it. I'm still navigating it. Like, I was... I, <laughs> I, I, she DM'd me the other day. She was like, who is this? And I was, and like, I was like, who is this? It's Jen. And, and she's like, like, oh, what? my God. I didn't know she knew how to DM. So I thought somebody had hacked her Instagram. So I was like, I'm going to report her to the Instagram. Lead. And then she was I like, said, am I not supposed to be doing this? And it was like, no, I'm just excited you DM'd me. <laughs> For hours, the follow button became inoperable due to an overload of web traffic to her account, with her first upload being a photo of a friend's cast reunion. So, oh, no, no, that's Did what it was. Like Someone it? said, I can't, I can't follow you. I'm trying to follow you, and I can't follow you. I barely knew what that even meant, but, <laughs> um, yeah, this happened. Just a glitch. This is the fourth most liked photo of all time on Instagram, and it was just her debut post. So people are still crazy about Jennifer Aniston and chomping at the bit for a friend's reunion. At five hours and 16 minutes, she became the fastest person to reach a million followers on the app, setting a Guinness World Record. At the 2020 SAG Awards, the internet went crazy over a possible reunion between Jennifer Aniston and her ex-husband Brad Pitt after the pair were spotted getting close backstage at the ceremony. Well, of course, we all saw the picture of Jen in that slinky white dress holding hands-ish with Brad backstage when she won the SAG Award. And I, like everybody else, loved that picture. I think for so many of us who had lived through the breakup with Brad and Jen, and I'd actually met them as a couple and they were so in love that I really was rooting for this. You know, they're both single. They both, he, she'd just been divorced from Justin and he was going through like the absolute breakup from hell from Angelina, which in my opinion was karma. Brad won Best Supporting Actor for his role in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Jennifer took home an award for her performance in the morning show. But the most exciting part of the night happened behind the curtains. What I loved about the detail was, you know, Brad was backstage from his own win and Jennifer won. And they reported that he stopped everything and walked over to a monitor to hear. Her, and he goes, oh, wow. And then, you know, she's walking past him and not seeing him and he's called out Aniston. And then, of course, there was a photographer who captured that moment, but it looks quite intimate. He's looking at her with such love. It was interesting, too, that on Twitter after that, somebody wrote, it's clear that he still loves her. And Courtney Cox liked the comment. So then you're like, oh, OK, so Courtney Cox agrees that he still loves her. You know, maybe her friends are shipping this relationship, too. I think a lot of us would like to see that happen because um, Brad and Jen do seem really, really, really well suited for each other. And he's really been through a horrendous uh, divorce with Angelina. And I think she hasn't really found a lasting love since him either. So it would be great. It seems like it would be a happy ending. When Jennifer turned to walk away, Brad reached out and grabbed her wrist as if he wanted her to stay with him. A photo was captured of the pair sharing this moment and was instantly a viral sensation, with fans of the pair speculating a romantic reunion. In February 2020, after years of hope and speculation by fans, it was announced that an official Friends reunion would be happening. The unscripted reunion will be coming to HBO Max, giving fans exactly what they've been yearning for since the show stopped filming in 2004. So in February of 2020, HBO Max, which is the station's new premium streaming service, announced that they had landed the Friends reunion. There's been speculation for years. Is there going to be a movie? Is there going to be a reunion? Is there going to be a new series? Nothing, 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 nothing. Everything's been squilched. And then with this announcement from HBO, just people went mad. All the, the original Friends cast posted this on their social media. Also, they each got at least $2.5 million to star in the reunion special, as well as executive producer credits. Despite being able to consistently watch reruns, the demand for a reunion has been a constant topic that the cast get questioned about regularly. 
I don't, I haven't thought about doing it. I don't know if people, do we, do we want to, uh, part of me feels like, do people want to see a Friends movie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we better get cooking before it's, you know, elderly friends. Although the special doesn't seem to clarify that the stars will be reprising their infamous roles, it will be bringing them all together once more to reminisce about their time on the set and all the great memories they had while filming the hit television sitcom. Jennifer Aniston has stolen the hearts of many for over 25 years. Her relatability and candid interviews make you feel like you know her, the best friend you share everything with and empathize with their setbacks. I think Jennifer Aniston is a lot deeper and more complicated than people give her credit for. Because she is accessible and funny and looks like the girl next door, the very attractive girl next door, I think people feel like they know her. But I think the real Jen is a much more nuanced, complex, intelligent person than we know. On screen and off, her authenticity becomes relatable to fans, showing her as friendlier and more down to earth than her peers on the red carpet. There is that every girlness about her. She's someone that you could know. She could have been like your cool or older babysitter, but then she also has that glamour with the style and like starting off with the Rachel haircut. And these threads were just like, again, underscored over and over and over again through the character, through her dating Brad Pitt, then marrying Brad Pitt, and to her having this kind of fairy tale existence. I think all those things together have helped propel her to be the most successful of the whole Friends contingent. I really like Jennifer Aniston because I think the warmth and the compassion that we see on screen is real. I think she genuinely is a good friend to people. There are so many people who genuinely love her in an industry that's famous for fakes and pretending. I think she's genuinely the real deal. Jennifer Aniston has managed to find the perfect balance between living in the public eye, but not being overly worried about public perception, a trait that has kept her sane in such a manic industry. Branching out to many different genres of film, Jennifer Aniston has proven her skills as an actress are extremely versatile, something that will keep her in the spotlight for years to come. I just knew I wanted to just break out and do other things, you know, and. This was great and I love all this, but I know that there's more that I, I want to do and that I'm capable of. So, you know, it just, it's just, and it's just unfolded. And I don't know why I'm still here. <laughs> I just feel I'm, I just love going to work.